good. Well, then you're back in the winner's circle. How good does that feel? It feels great, man. It feels great. I, I was just told that this is my 12th first round finish, and I'm like, I love those stats. <laughs> What's funny, I asked you earlier in the week, you know, we talked about here's a guy that's 35, you know, has been in the game for a while, you know, is his game still evolving? What's he got? And then you go out and do a performance like that. You got you to gotta feel happy about what you're able to bring out tonight. Dude, I'm super stoked. Uh, honestly, I think I told you guys before, but on any given night, man, I can beat anyone in my division in the world. And I got a lot of attributes to bring to the game. I'm a pick your poison fighter. I really have, uh, it doesn't matter what range the fight can go, man. I, I have enough weapons to, and enough techniques with those weapons and attributes to, uh, to bring out a win and a first round finish. Was part of the game plan to try to get him into the clinch and work those knees? I mean, what was the game plan for him coming in? Uh, I mean, the game plan is always uh, pretty much I'm going to pick you apart and either grab the clinch or make you go for the clinch. And in the clinch, you're going you're gonna to feel the wrath of them. When you drop that knee and you hit him in the center and he dropped down, did you, have a, did you know it was over at that point? I knew it was a wrap, you know, but until the ref jumps in, I didn't want to take the chance. So I tried to follow up with a few punches, but Mergliata is an amazing ref, did his job. So I was over and called it. I'm a big fan of Jake too, man. Like we were supposed to fight back in the day. Um, and then, like I said, I took the fight with Fitch uh, on 48 hours notice, but I feel like this was a fight that uh, should have happened back then. And, um, you know, it, it was meant to be. You had a big size advantage out there. you think that that helped, or was it not really a factor? What's that? The big size advantage that you had come in the height and reach advantage. you think that played a factor, or not really? Uh, I mean, it probably did, but again, it, it, it goes both ways, you know. I, I just know how to use my attributes and my God-given length to, uh, to my best abilities and you know he was trying to do a good job and even inside my clinch he was trying to throw those bombs you know and I, anything could happen man he could have clipped one of those uh, but again I felt I was doing very good with there doing a good job bringing my elbows up correctly to uh, to deflect those strikes and um, again that that's my zone. Are you surprised that he was so willing to engage in the clinch because it seemed like, like like you said he was seemed like he was wanted to be there it wasn't like he was trying to get out or uh, if I head kicked you a few times, you're probably going to try to come in and, <laughs> and, and, and go for the clinch. And again, man, I got a very, very dangerous guard and ground game. So the actual takedown is a very dangerous spot too. So maybe putting my back against the cage again, man, in the, in the past, people have been able to use that to their advantage. People have been able to use taking me down to their advantage. And again, man, I, I, I literally learned from my, uh, my mistakes and, and my, my, I guess weaknesses, and and I try to make them my, my strengths every time. And we, we talked about this in uh, the pre-fight media stuff that you know you run the two-fight skid. Now you pick up a win. How much of a weight off your shoulders is that? I mean, I guess it's huge. Uh, but realistically, man, I've never been more calmer in my life. Going into this fight, everyone was talking about the pressure on my shoulders, and uh, I just kind of put my mentality back to where I was when I was in. Two th you know, tough six days, and I was just like ear to ear smile. If you saw me walk out there, dude, I was I was chill. I was having a good time. I was smiling. I was ready for war. But you know, I, I'm just blessed to do what I, I love to do for a living. I mean, I can't believe I'm here right now. Let alone for as long as I've been doing it, man. And to still have the skills, and for you guys to be able to see that I am improving, man. I am not stalemated. I've never stalemated. Anytime that I felt I was stalemated, dude, I had traveled across the world training with people to get my game up. And for this training camp, I got a huge blessing to go out to Tent Planet San Diego, train with Bill and Boogie and uh, everybody out there. I even got to uh, train with Anthony Hardonk and got to train with Eddie Bravo and see Eddie Bravo out in, uh, cause it's only a two hour drive, man. Uh, it, it was beautiful, man. I love everything about this sport. I don't know if you can remember what you were thinking, but right after the win, you climbed out of the cage and you showed a lot of emotion on your on your face. Do you remember what you were thinking at that moment when you kind of looked like you were just releasing maybe a lot of just the build up for it? Uh, I don't know what was going through your head if, if you if you can recall what you were feeling at that moment. I mean, honestly, in my head, we we even said it before uh, in in the. Um, in the hotel room, man. I'm not here to just maintain a job, dude. I'm here to get a title shot, you know, and to get another 12th first round finish and to go out there, dude. Every time I go out there, you're gonna get a fight, win, lose, or draw, but I'm there to finish you every time. 
but typically to, to make that path to the title, you have to work through certain individuals. Are there is there key names of people that you would like that maybe just style wise makes sense for a fun fight, or who logically makes sense for you next? Mm. I'm really not too sure about that one, man. I guess me and Sean Shelby and hopefully Danny White, man. I wanna, I wanna have a conversation, man. My, my plan is to go to Tent Planet, uh, Las Vegas, and 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 see my boy out there, and then go and hopefully have a nice conversation with them. And um, man, we got a lot of talking to do, hopefully, and 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 see where where I stack up in this division and where they may or may not have plans for me. Ben, you have your ankles taped, and they said on the broadcast that not every state allows you to tape your ankles like that. Does that play a factor when you're able to tape your ankles like that, or is that something? Uh, they're not factor? taped. They're, they're not taped. They're, they're, the only thing, they're, they're just, uh, what's it called, uh, like ankle um, brace? I don't know. Yeah, whatever it is. Yeah, wrap. I mean, um, it doesn't matter. I mean, if they, uh, hopefully they allow it. If they don't, it doesn't even really change anything. It's not a big deal. Thank you. Congratulations. Uh, thank you, so you guys again, man.